A quick note about logical equivalence. I talked about this um, a little bit more informally in past videos, but I do want to talk about it a little more formally now. So we say two statements, two logical statements, S1 and S2 are logically equivalent, and we use this symbol here, this kind of triple equal, if you could think about it, to say two statements are equivalent, exactly when they have the same truth values for all combinations of truth values of the constituent statements. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if we have a logical formula here, let's say for the example, this one here, and I want to show that this guy is equivalent to it, then if I make a truth table, it should have the exact same truth values in each situation for the truth values of its constituent statement. So let's do this example. Let's show that the negation of P or Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P and the negation of Q. So let's go ahead and do this. So we'll do this via truth table. So we need P and Q. There's only two, so we can just write down all four truth values like this. So we need P or Q. We know what that is. P or Q is true in all situations except when both are false. And then the negation of that, well, we just flip the truth values. So it's going to be false, 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 true. Okay. So if this logical formula has um, the truth values false, 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 true in this situation here, then these guys are logically equivalent since they have the same truth values. So let's figure it out. We need not P and not Q. So let's figure that out. That's false, false, true, true, false, true, false, true. And then finally, the and of them. So we need not P and not Q. Q. Okay, and we look. Remember, ands are only true when both are true, and both are true exactly in the last situation, and that's it. And it's false in the other situations. So you can see here the negation of P or Q, and the negation of P and the negation of Q have the same truth values. So these are logically equivalent. Maybe let's come up with, um, a, in some sense, a real life example. Let's give um, some meanings to P and Q just so it makes sense to us a little more intuitively. So if we say that P is the statement I like coffee and Q is the statement I like tea maybe it's a good example for you guys pause the video now and see if you can write out in words what the negation of P or Q is and also write out the negation of P and the negation of Q in words. So pause the video now and give that a go. Okay, now that you're back, this is the way I would express it. So the negation of P or Q. Well, the negation means something isn't true. So we'll say that this is saying that, well, this is saying I like coffee or I like tea, I like coffee, or I like tea. And the negation means, well, it's not true that. So it just changes the, the truth value. So I would express this in words as it is not true that I like coffee
or I like T. And then, well, the negation of P and the negation of Q would be, well, I don't like coffee. That's the negation of P. And I don't like T. That's the negation of Q. And remember, these are logically equivalent. They mean the same thing. So if I say it's not true that I like coffee or I like tea, if that's not true, well, what must that mean? Well, that means that, well, if this is false here, it must mean that I don't like coffee and I don't like tea. Since I like coffee or I like tea would be true if at least one of these guys is true. So if it's untrue, then it means that I don't like coffee and I don't like tea. So you can see in words how the logical equivalence works. I will leave this one here as a small exercise for you guys. Follow the exact same procedure that we did for the first example. And just check that you're getting the same truth table in both situations. If you are, then you're doing these correctly. And note that we do have words for these. We call them De Morgan's Laws. We could think of it, if you want to think of it um, in relation to something like algebra, we can distribute this negative across a bracket, but if we do that, we have to change ands to ors or ors to ands. So that's another way of thinking about De Morgan's Laws, if you want to think of it more like algebra. We can distribute this across, so it becomes not P, not Q, and it's at kind of the penalty, if you will. I shouldn't say the penalty, but the other thing we have to do is we have to switch our combining word there. Okay. So, on the next slide, I want to talk about a few logical equivalences that are very important to us, and we can use them a whole bunch to make expressions a little bit simpler. So, I'm going to show you them on the next slide, and we'll just talk about them a little bit. On the slide following that, we'll prove a couple of them in the same way that we proved um, the De Morgan's Laws above. And then we'll do an example using only logical equivalences to show um, two statements are logical equivalents. So we won't use truth tables. So that's the plan coming up. The first one I want to tell you about the mathematical jargon name for it is idempotence, which really means if you take an and and an or um, of something with itself, it doesn't do anything. And maybe I'll do this via truth table since it's very easy. So we have P. That's the only thing we have. So we have P can be true or false. And then P and P. So remember that this is true exactly when both of its constituents are true and false otherwise. Well, P and P is true. When P is true, we have both sides being true. And if P is false, then P and P is false. Hey, look, they have the same truth table. They're logically equivalent. And you can do the same idea for P or P as well. So if you ever see one of these guys in a logical argument, you can just simplify it. You can replace the P and P with just P. And you'll see these via, uh, using an example in a little bit. Commutativity basically means the same thing as it does in algebra. With ands and ors, order doesn't matter. P and Q 
is the same thing as Q and P. You can reorder it that way. Same thing with ORs. P or Q is the same thing as P, or Q or P. Oh, we're missing a couple of brackets here. Sorry about that. Let me write them in by hand. So, associativity basically says that if you just have the same logical symbol, so and or ors, um, grouping doesn't matter. So if you have P and Q and R, it's the same thing as P and Q and R. And same thing with or. So associativity, just like with, say, addition and multiplication with numbers, kind of grouping doesn't matter. Distributivity is kind of the same thing as it is in um, algebra as well. Let me scroll up here, make a little more room. Distributivity says, well, I can distribute I can distribute this uh, logical statement over to the each statement inside the bracket, and it works the same way. So as um, with algebra, so it's P and Q here, or P and R. So this symbol here becomes the one in the brackets for each of them, and this symbol here is the middle symbol. And it works the same way if we have the or and the and reversed. That's our middle symbol. And this is the one in each bracket. Double negation. If you have a negative of a negative, it becomes a positive. Same idea as in algebra. De Morgan's laws, these we just talked about on the previous slide. With a tautology, well, remember, tautologies are always true. Something that's always true. Well, if we have something like P and something that's always true, then P and always something that's always true is going to be true exactly when P is true, because we know this bit is always true anyway. So this is logically equivalent to P. And with an OR, remember, only one bit of an OR statement has to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. If we know one bit is always true, then the OR statement is always true. It's equivalent to a tautology. So these are logically equivalent. We can play the same game with a contradiction. If we have something that is always false, remember contradictions here are always false. If we have any statement and something that's always false, there's no way for this and statement to be true. There's no way for both bits to be true because this bit is always false. So that's logically equivalent to something that's always false. It's logically equivalent to a contradiction. And with an or, we need at least one of the bits of an or statement to be true. If this is always false, we know that it depends on the truth value of P, whether the or statement is true. So it's logically equivalent to just P. And remember, you can check these uh, rules via truth tables. In fact, we're going to do a couple on the next slide. But if you want to check that they are indeed logically equivalent, just do the truth tables for all of these. For each side of your equivalents, make sure they match. Let's scroll a little bit. <clears throat> so, singularity of truth values. So, remember, P is either true or false. So the negation of it is going to be the other truth value. So if one is true, then the other is false. If this is false, this is true. So if we have P or not P, well, one of these has to be true. So the or is always true. So in that case, it's a tautology. It's always true. 
If we have an and P and not P, there's no way for P and not P to be true at the same time, since if one's true, the other is false. So this is never true. It's a contradiction. And of course, if you take something that's a tautology that's always true and you negate it, it becomes a contradiction. And similarly, something that is a contradiction, if you negate it, it becomes a tautology. We talked about this in a previous video, but we know that the contrapositive uh, P implies Q, or if P then Q, is the same as not Q implies not P, or if not Q then not P. And we showed that via truth table. These guys are logically equivalent. Another thing that's logically equivalent, we didn't really do this, but again, we'll check this via truth table is an implication P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q. And I just want to be careful here. So remember, because of order of operations, it's, n it's, it's not the case that it's the negation of P or Q. It's just the negation of P or Q. So maybe just to make it a little more readable, I'll add some brackets here just so you know that the negation is just of P. So it's not P or Q. And with the biconditional definition here, we know that P if and only if Q, well, that's saying that P implies Q and Q implies P. And in fact, I'm going to write another one here. This is also a good one to have. So, P, if and only if Q, is the same thing as saying P implies Q. And let's write the contrapositive of this guy, since it's logically equivalent. We can do that. So this becomes, well, the contrapositive is not P implies not Q. So that's another useful way of thinking about an if and only if statement, a biconditional. It means that if P, then Q, and if not P, then not Q. And we'll do some examples using these going forward, of course, but we know they're logically equivalent. And again, you can always check these via your truth tables. So this example wants us to show that for A, is indeed logically equivalent. So we'll use a truth table to do that. Let me remind you what that was. So it's P and Q or R was logically equivalent to P and Q or P and R. So they mean the same thing logically. Let's show it via a truth table. Note that we have three different constituent statements here. So we are going to need a truth table that has eight different rows. So let's give them some headings. So we need P, Q, and R for sure. What else do we need? We need P and Q. R we need, let's do, we have P, we need Q or R. What else do we need? Well, we need P and Q or R. So that is the left-hand side. Now the right-hand side, we need P and Q. We need P and R. And then we need the or of them. P and Q or P and R. And we want to show that these two rows, or sorry, these two columns, these two columns have the same truth values. If we can show that, we know that they're logically equivalent. So let's write down our truth table here. True, 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 true. False, 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 false. Then we have true, true. False, false, true, true. False, false. 
And true, false. True, false. True, false. True, false. That's all eight possibilities for P, Q, and R being true or false. Okay. Now let's figure out... Oh, let's switch to the black pen here. Let's figure out Q or R. So remember, Q or R is true exactly when... Um, at least one of Q or R is true. So, we have true here. Since Q is true and R is true. Q is true, so we have true here. R is true, so we have true here. Neither Q nor R is true, so this is false. And similar, we have true, 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 false. And then we need... P and Q or R. So this is true exactly when both P and Q or R is true. So in the first row, we do have that situation. P is true and Q or R is true. So this is true. Then we have another true. We have another true. Then we have a false. And the other ones, we have false as well. Just checking to see if both P and Q or R is true, and we find that it's only true in the first three situations. Okay, let's calculate P and Q now. So that is only true in the first two rows. Here, that is the only time that both P and Q are both true. P and R are true in the first and third rows, and you can check at no other time. So it's true, false, true, false, 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 false. All right. And now we need the OR of these two columns here. So... We need a situation where at least one is true. And you can see that here we have true, true. So this is true. Here we have true, false. So it's going to be true. Here we have false, true. So it's going to be true. The other situations have both false. So our or statement is false in those scenarios. And you can see that... Our column here, P and Q or R, and our column here, P and Q or P and R, have the same truth values. So it's three trues followed by five falses. So we have that these guys are logically equivalent. They have the same truth values given the truth values of P, Q, and R. So they are logically equivalent. So our statements... Are logically equivalent. Let me scroll down to our next example. We want to prove 12 here. Let me remind you what 12 was. That was our conditional simplification. We can change a conditional. P implies Q. We can change that to not P or Q. This might be a good one for you guys to try by yourselves. So pause the video now and see if you can work out the truth table of both P implies Q, which is fairly easy, and not P or Q, which again is fairly easy, and show that they have the same truth values in each column. Okay. Now that we're back, let's work this out. We only have two variables here, so this isn't going to be particularly long. That's great. So we need P implies Q. We know what that is. That is false. Exactly when the if part is true and the then part is false. So that's the first 
column we're interested in. We need not p, so the negation of p, flip the truth values of p, false, false, true, true, and we need not p or q. So let's work that out. Well, remember, we need at least one of not p and q to be true. So we have, here's our not p, here's our q. We have true, false. One of them's true, so this is true. Here we have false, false, so this is false. Here we have true, true. Here we have false, true. In both situations, at least one is true. So we have true for both of those rows and if we look at those two columns they have the same truth values so our statements are logically equivalent So I want to scroll down and I want to use uh, uh, these logical equivalences to show other statements are logically equivalent. So we're going to do example 4.4 here, which is showing that, let me just make it so we can see what it is. So we want to show that P and P implies Q, all that implies Q, is indeed logically equivalent to what the tautology. So, in logic, especially in philosophy, they like to call this type of thing modus ponens. We won't worry about those names. We're going to call this a direct proof. Um, so, let's go ahead and show this. And again, we're not going to do a truth table. We're just going to use those logical equivalences. Maybe I'll write solution instead. We're going to um, use those logical equivalences that we had above. So let's write this down so we have a little room. So we have P and P implies Q. So we have that implies Q is a tautology. It's always true. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the left-hand side, and in the end, my last line should be that it is equivalent to a tautology. So I'm going to use some logical equivalences here to do this. And the first one, and this is a, a good technique, is implications are a lot of times difficult to deal with in terms of logical equivalences. So a lot of times it's a good idea to change them using the conditional equivalence to that statement with the or. So we'll change P implies Q to not P or Q. So we'll have this as P and, and we're going to have not P or Q. So that implies Q. That's logically equivalent. And I like to say what I did there so that any reader can read this and see um, what I did. And I used number 12 in the um, previous slide. So that was the conditional um, simplification. Okay. So looking at this, Maybe it's a good idea to start cleaning this up a little bit. So I notice I have P and something or something. So I can use that idea of distributivity to help me out here. So let me do distributivity. And if I think about it, I like to think a couple of moves ahead. If I do distributivity, then, then I'm going to have P and not P. So if I have something like P and not P, well, I know that that's going to be a contradiction. And whenever I get contradictions or tautologies somewhere, it usually simplifies my life quite a bit. So 
if you can do some of these logical equivalences to get um, tautologies or contradictions, that's a good idea. Also, if you can get kind of um, expressions with the same constituent um, statements, that's usually a good idea as well, because you can use something like idempotence or maybe one of the tautology or contradiction um, equivalences to help you simplify even more. So I'm going to use distributivity here. Hopefully that'll simplify quite a bit. So this is going to become, using the distributivity law, this is going to be the same thing as p and not p or p and q. So that implies q. And we used um, the distribu distributivity there, and that was 4a on the previous slide that we used. Okay, and let me put actually some brackets here so it's a little more clear. Okay. So now I notice I have this p and not p. I know that that is indeed a contradiction. And that's by 9a. So this is indeed always false. p and not p is always false. So this is the same thing as saying a contradiction. f or p and q or, or sorry, implies q. Okay, and that is by, I believe it's 9a is that one. Let me have a quick look. No, 9b. Sorry, that should be 9b. Okay. And whenever you have a contradiction or a tautology um, with something else, you should be able to simplify even more. So we have a contradiction or this expression here. So when we have an expression with a contradiction, we know the or is just the part that's left. So this becomes just p and q implies q. And that was by, from the previous slide, let me have a quick look, that was by 8b. Okay, so we're almost there. We're going to need a couple more lines than I kind of thought here. So let me erase this uh, and move it down eventually. But we know we're going to end up with something logically equivalent to a tautology. So now it's a good time to use our um, conditional simplification again to get rid of this conditional. So this becomes the negation of the if part, so the negation of p and q, or q, and that's by 12, by the conditional simplification. Great. And remember, we want this to be a tautology. So we have the negation of an expression in brackets. So let's use the Morgan's Law here. That's number 6. So this becomes, the Morgan's Law says if you have the negation of P and Q, it becomes the negation of P or the negation of Q. So this is the negation of P or the negation of Q or Q, and that's by the Morgan's Law, number 6, and in fact we're using the or version, which is 6a in our chart on the previous slide. Okay, let's keep going. Now, remember, to simplify it helps to get tautologies and contradictions or to have um, situations <clears throat> where you have the same logical um, constituent statement with an and or an or or an implication or something with it. That'll help you out quite a bit. So let's just move our brackets. We basically have not P or not Q or Q. So we just have a bunch of ors between 
some statements so we can use associativity here. So we're going to use associativity and group it in the following way. Not P or, I'll write it like this, not Q or Q. And that's by associativity, which is, I believe, 3B on the previous slide. And hey, look at this, we're almost done. So looking at this, I'll explain what's going to happen, and hopefully it might be a little bit obvious to you. But we have not Q or Q. This is always true. So this is going to be a tautology. And then we have something or a tautology. Since the tautology is always true, then we know that the expression is always true. So the whole thing is a tautology. We just have to write that down. So this becomes not P or a tautology. And we know that not Q or Q is a tautology by 9a. And finally, we can use 9a yet again. Oh, sorry, it's not 9a we're actually using again. It is 7. We're saying what happens with the tautology. So this is going to be um, 7b, that this whole thing is just a tautology. So we have something or a tautology is logically equivalent to a tautology by 7b. So rather than writing out a big old truth table, we can just go through and use our logical equivalences. Now I will say, maybe there are other ways of doing this. This is just the way that I approach it, but just like simplification algebra, there's lots of ways to get to the same end result. This is the way I approach it and this seemed to work. But if you approach it a different way and it works for you, that's good too. Let's do a couple more examples on the next slide. Let's do this next one here, and I think it's instructive if you guys try it before we do it together. It's not going to be very different from the previous one. In fact, you can see that it's very similar. So we have something and an implication implies something is equivalent to a tautology. So again, in logic, that's called modus tollens. We probably won't worry about that too, too much. But um, I will say it's a good exercise for you guys to practice this right now. So give it a go. Start with the left-hand side, just like we did in the previous example, and see if you can indeed get it um, in the form of a tautology. Use the last one as an example of good steps to follow, because um, I think it's very instructive to see the previous example and this example because it's so close. So pause the video now and give that a go. Okay, now that you're back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video myself and I'm just going to write it out in one kind of chunk and we can just talk about it um, in each step because it is very similar than the last one. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, these were my steps and you can see they're very, very similar to the ones for the previous example. We um, changed the conditional to an or statement here. We used um, distributivity to distribute that not Q over the not P and Q here. We noticed that this was indeed a contradiction. And we know what to do when we have um, something or a contradiction. We can just get rid of that part. So we've simplified it enough that we can indeed use our conditional simplification again, number 12. We did that. Um, then we used the Morgan's Law here so that we could separate these things so we could have nice constituent parts by themselves. That always helps. We noticed we had a negative of the negative, so we had to use number 5 here to say that that is indeed just a regular statement. So not, not Q is just Q, 
and not not p it's just p now we want to get this q or not q together so we can say that is indeed a tautology and we're good to go so we had to use the idea of commutativity to swap these so we can use associativity to group them so we use commutativity so that we got the q and the not q next to each other so we have p or q or not q and then we could use associativity to group the two that we wanted q or not q we know this is indeed a tautology it's 9a and we have something or a tautology that is indeed a tautology that's always true so that is by 7 and that's how these logical equivalences work so remember what you're trying to get to um in this case we wanted our right hand side to be a tautology so we wanted to work towards that it's a lot like simplification in algebra it's that same idea look at what you wanted to simplify towards and try and do it that way and hopefully you can do things like get your constituent statements together either as a negation or by itself and you can use the ideas of tautologies contradictions and idempotence to help you out okay let us do a couple of more things nothing too big I want to talk about when statements aren't logically equivalent so let me scroll up here now make it a little bit bigger so we can see so to show two statements are not logically equivalent all you need to do is find one set of truth values so choices for p q and r where the truth value differs for the left hand side and the right hand side so we just need to find one so you could do this via a truth table or you could think about it a little bit logically so maybe i will get you guys to pause the video and see if you can find if you can pick out some truth values for p q and r so that the left hand side and the right hand side don't have the same truth values so my thinking here if i was to do this to find the situation is well i know that implications are false exactly when the if part is true and the then part is false so i want to pick a case so that the values for p q and r for one of these is when is such that um the whole thing is false so the if part is true and the then part is false for one of them and for the other one it's anything else so the first thing that i notice is that well here i just have p here i have p or q so i can make the if part of the right hand side true by making q true and p false if i do that that makes the if part of the left hand side false so this whole thing is true so i have the if part is true i need the then part to be false so i'll make r false here and that in some sense does it i have that the if part of the left hand side or sorry of the right hand side is true the then part is false so i know that with these truth values i know this whole expression here is false but on the left hand side well i know the if part is false i don't need to look any farther this is going to be vacuously true so this will do it when p is false q is true and r is false then the left hand side and the right hand side have different truth values so they can't be logically equivalent and then we can just do a little truth table to show this and really you just need one row here so let's do it we need p q and r let's convince people so we need q or r for the then part of the left hand side and then we need p implies that that's the left hand side done and then we need p or q and finally we need p or q 
implies R. And I only need one row. I don't need to do the entire truth table. I just need one situation. And thinking about it, we liked the situation. P was false. Q was true. R was false. Then Q or R here is true. So P implies Q or R. So we have false, true. So this is true. P or Q in this case is true. Since we have false, true, one of them needs to be true for an or to be true. And here we have P or Q implies R. We have true. We have false. So this is false. I like to put some arrows here just to make it clear what two um, columns we should be looking at. And we can say something like since... The truth values differ. When P is false, Q is true. And R is false. These statements Are not logically equivalent. The next example I want to do, and this will be the last one for this section, I want to talk about when something is neither a tautology or a contradiction. So it's kind of that same idea. So remember, tautologies are always true. Contradictions are always false. So if you can find two different situations, one where the expression, the statement is true, and the other where the statement is false, then you'll show that it's not a tautology or a contradiction. So maybe pause the video now and see if you can find choices of truth values for P, Q, and R. You'll need two sets of them. So that in the first set, the expression is true here. And in the second, the expression is false. So pause the video and see if you can figure that out. All right. So again, we can do this quickly via a little truth table. Let's write down what we need to figure out. We need Q or R. And of course, we need P implies that. Okay. And this time we're going to need two different rows. We don't need it all. We just need two. So for the first one, let's have them all true. That'll give me that the expression is indeed true. Q or R is true. And we have P implies Q or R. So that P is true. Q or R is true, so our expression here is true. The second one, well, we need it to be false, so we need that the if part is true and the then part is false. So we want P to be true. We want Q or R to be false. So the only way to do that is to have both Q false and R false. So in this situation, we have the if part true, the then part false. So we know that the expression is false. So, this expression is neither a tautology or contradiction. And remember, to show something is not a tautology nor a contradiction, you just have to show that there are differing truth values. Remember, tautologies are always true. Contradictions are always false. If you find differing ones, can't be either. And that's it for this section.